we went with my wife's uh, father and mother, because, you know, he had open heart surgery. Y'all remember that, right? Y'all been praying for him. But while he was down having an open heart surgery, uh, mom was, grandma was, you know, in charge of the, the, the finances, you know? So he was there in the hospital, and, you know, we said, mom said, well, we're going to go in and have on this hotel, we're going to stay in a hotel so we can be close to the hospital because we're going to be down there all week long because, you know, we can't sleep in the hospital. So we said, okay, we're going to go pass on the hotel. So she said, well, take me to the bank so that I can get my money. And when I get my money, then I'll give you all your half and then you put your half in and then we'll pay for the hotel. Well, we took it to the bank. And it's her bank. And it's her money. And she got money in there. And she went down to the bank, and I was with her, you know, and, 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 and I respect, I take her to the bank, but when she gets to the window, I let her do her business. So I take her to the bank, then I go sit down and let her do her business. So I sat down, and I started noticing, I said, something, something's going on, it's taking too long at the counter. I was trying to respect, I said, let me go on up and find out, I said, Grandma, is everything okay? And she, and then the lady started telling me, well, she can't get her money out. And I said, well, why can't she get her money out? She said, because her license is expired. And I said, oh my goodness. She said, yeah, her license is expired. And I said, well, but that's her account and everything. It, she said, but I'm sorry. She said, her license is expired. And I said, well, I said, well, uh, the lady said, but that's okay. She said, all she has to do is just use her debit card. And even though her license is fired, she just used a debit card and she can access her money. I said, oh, good news, Grandma. I said, all you got to do is just give her, you know, just switch, just pull out your debit card, dun, 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 and everything will be right. She looked at me like, baby, she said, not only do I not have my debit card, she said, I don't have no pin number. She said, I don't know what you talk about. Yeah. I don't use it. She said, I don't use it. Never use it. What's the point? The money is sitting up there in the bank. She got it. She's actually Pauline Smith. She could not have access to that money. Let's give God some praise for that anointed example. I just want to give God some praise. For that. that that really stuck in my mind. I said, "Isn't that something?" I, I think we take it for granted because how many y'all got? How many y'all got a uh, debit card? Raise your hand. I know I do. I don't care about a cash around me. All I need is that, and all you need is that pin number. What am I trying to tell you? I'm talking to you today about how to access your heavenly bank account. Thank you, Jesus. Amen to God. And I got news for you. God is like that example. That lady, you can see it all over her face. She's like, well, this seems like a nice lady. She's a sweet lady. She's so nice. And this is, I'm coming up there, you know. There ain't no pants sagging down on me. Ain't no, you know, you know what I mean? I'm just, and she's looking at us like, this looks like a nice couple of people. But they don't look like they're trying to run a scam. But rules are rules. I can't. And what I'm trying to tell you is, God can't if you don't. You yes. got it. That's right. It's in there. Yeah. But See, don't you listen to these people that are telling you, yeah, they're telling you this, the grace movement is telling you the truth. The good news is they're telling you the truth. The bad news is they're telling you half the truth. And a half truth is worse than a whole lie. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. God, listen, God has done everything, but you have to do something. You have to do something. So point number one is you have to keep hearing the word of God. Hear by what? Faith. faith. Say hear by faith. Hear by faith. Say it again. Say hear by faith. Hear by faith. All right. Continually hearing the word of God about, about your inheritance will build up your faith. Not just about everything. I'm talking about, about your inheritance. Specific. You know, whenever you hear the word of God in a specific area, that's what's going to build your faith up in that what? Area. You don't, you don't, you don't uh, believe in divine healing? That's because you ain't been listening to enough teaching on divine healing. Come on, somebody. Pray with me today. It says, you, it says, continually hearing the word of God about your inheritance will build up your faith 
You have to keep hearing it until you really believe it. That's why I just love that song. Time to believe what God said. Go on, sister, that you're in the, in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Now, this particular passage of Scripture uh, is contextually, it really has to do with the gospel. It has to do with salvation. But the principle is true about any belief and faith in God's word. Okay? It, it, it has to do with salvation, but, it, but, but you can relate it also to your marriage. Okay? In other words, here's the point I'm trying to really drive home. This is what I really want you to get. Everybody that hears doesn't necessarily believe. And everybody that believes doesn't necessarily act on what they believe. Say that again. Everybody that hears doesn't necessarily believe. Everybody, there's a whole lot of people sitting in there right now. You might not believe what I'm saying. And then you might believe, but then are you going to act on what I'm saying? Uh, Romans chapter 10. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, you know and I know that everybody says we're saved by grace. grace it's a, a, it is unmerited favor. It is in the sense that you can't do enough, quote, good works to earn in that sense. But grace works through faith. There's always at least one act of faith that you have to do. There it was right there, verse number 13. Whoever shall call upon, say call upon. You don't call upon him. You, that, that you, you can say you believe, but if you didn't call upon him, that's not faith. Amen. We're saved by grace through what? Faith. faith. So you're going to have to hear, but then you have to call upon. He says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. Here it is. How then shall they call upon him? In other words, how shall they act on faith in whom they have not believed? I told you that belief was the foundation of faith. You can't act without faith first believe. So how shall they call or act without first believe? And how shall they believe in him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and, and bring glad tidings of good things. In other words, that's, that's why it's really good to bless the pastor, at least a good preacher, because they're, they're trying to Give you something that money can't buy. They're trying to build up your faith. Yeah. They're trying to help your belief, your belief system to go higher, your belief uh, capacity to go higher, because the higher your belief capacity goes, the higher your faith can act. Right? Yeah. All right. So then it says, verse 16, here it is, to show you what I said is true. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Did you see that? Yeah. They have not all obeyed the gospel. In other words, they heard it, but they didn't believe it. They, and they didn't act on it. They have not all obeyed, obeys an action. They have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? See, a lot of people heard, just like in Jesus' day. A lot of people heard, but not everybody believed. A lot of people hear the gospel today, but not everybody believed. Verse 17, so their faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by the? Word of God. Church, I have a question today. How are you hearing? I know that sounds silly, but it's very, very profound. How are you hearing the word of God? How are you hearing? What do you mean, Pastor? We all hear the same. No, we're not. I just proved it to you. Some people are hearing and believing and acting. Then some are not even believing, and some are believing and not acting. I have a question. How are you turning and say, how are you hearing? How are you hearing? This is really important. How are you hearing? Are you, listen, are you hearing with a dull ear or a sharp ear? Are you hearing with a, a wet ear or a sleepy ear? In other words, are you really focused? Or are you here kind of, I sure hope you hurry up and finish this. I got to go to bed. <laughs> are you hearing half ear? Like, I'm hearing, but I'm trying to think about what I'm going to eat. For, for <laughs> Are you, really, are you here with a sharp ear or a dull ear? Are you here with a, with a whole ear or with a divided ear? Watch this. If you hear with an open, attentive, and expectant and receptive ear or heart, faith will be produced. It's, 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 
It, it, yeah. it cannot yeah. not happen. It's an absolute, it's impossible for it not to happen. You say, Pastor, well, how can you say that? I can say that because that's what Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 13. He said there were four types of hearts. The first one is a hard heart. The second one is a shallow heart. The third one is a divided heart. And the last one is a good heart. And what does the good heart do? It receives. And, and watch this. Even with the good heart, it says some 30, some 60, some 100. So in other words, you receive it, but how much attention are you really paying to it? Did you, were, you awake for, were you awake for a third of the sermon? Two-thirds of the sermon? Or did you hear it all? Well, I got news for you. I got news for you. Even if you were awake for, listen to me, even if you were awake for the whole sermon, science tells us that you only retain about 10% of what you, what you hear. That's true. So, Houston, we got a problem. Yeah. So now, Pastor, what, what you got to say about that? I was, I was, I wasn't sleeping in the back pew. God bless all y'all in the back pew. I know y'all not back there, so, so that I can't see you sleep. But anyway, so what, what you got to say about that? We don't retain ten percent what we hear. What's the solution? Guess what the solution is? You're gonna have to keep hearing and keep hearing. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I'm going to have to keep hearing. I'm going to give you a great example. Something happened. What was that? Was that two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, I taught on this inheritance. And after I taught on it, God told me to tell you something. Uh, uh, an assignment. God told me to give you an assignment. Somebody say, faith. Faith. Without words. Without words. Is dead. Is dead. Being alone. Mm -hmm. So, he told me to give you an assignment. And guess why he told me to give you an assignment? Because he gave it first to me. He gave it first to me. I heard a message, and the Holy Spirit told me, I want you to listen to that message three times. Now, if the message, that message was long. That message was an hour and 20 minutes. I teach for 40 minutes. I listened to that message. That's over three hours, then, right? I listened to that message. Well, actually, I listened to the message four times total because... One live and then three times after that. But that thing got so down in my heart. Why? Because, listen, I, I was hearing by faith. Hearing by faith means I'm expecting that after I hear this, God's going to bless me. God's going to do something. See, by faith, whenever you, do, whenever you respond to God by faith, you know a blessing's coming. The only thing you don't know is when, how, and where. Somebody say, amen. 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 To whatever you do, that God told you to do by faith. Because he, but what does the Bible say? Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith is what? Possible. Possible to please God. Those who come to God must believe he is. And that he is a what? Rewarder. rewarder. Say rewarder. rewarder. Say rewarder. rewarder. Of them that. Ah. See, even in that he told you. You have to diligently. You can't get it by hearing it one time. He said, but now you hear it. More than one time, he said, I'm going to reward you. But you just don't have to hear my faith. In other words, you're trusting that as you are doing more than the minimum, that you're going to get more back than the minimum. You're doing the minimum, and, and they already proved scientifically you only retain 10% of what you hear. So then why do you believe that you're going to get 100% return when you only heard 10%? Come on. Yes. All right, I got a question for you. Uh, this is a rhetorical question. You don't have to raise your hand. How many of you have ever listened to a message more than one time? See, it, it, and if you did that, then you know like I know that when you were hearing it that second or third or whatever time, you said, well, I didn't hear that the first time. Yes. Come on now. Can yes. I get a little wave off it? You'd be like, man, I, did, I was sitting up there, but I didn't hear that. How did I not hear that? And then when I go on the second time, third time, I'm really like one. How did I do that? I just heard that. Because that's the process. That's the way it happens. So watch this. 